Wigmore Hall, London. Each year, more than 200,000 people attend a concert here. 2,000 artists will take to the stage, established stars of the musical world, alongside young performers at the start of their careers. John Gilhooley is director of Wigmore Hall. In the way that Schubert tests a young singer in song, I think a young string quartet, or any string quartet at any stage, is very often tested by Haydn. And it's a wonderful body of work. So we've asked the Castalian String Quartet, who I believe is one of the best young emerging string quartets on the scene today, and as yet relatively unknown to our audience, to do the Opus 76 Quartet. So that's a way of establishing them, of celebrating Haydn's relevance to, to quartets of all ages, because we have so many established quartets, so many who've been playing Haydn for decades, alongside the Doric, the Elias, the Heath Quartet, the younger generation coming up, particularly of British players, uh, and they've all got something special to say. The Doric has been greatly praised for their Opus 20s on recording and, and in the hall, so we bring those back. Uh, so it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to give that canvas that Haydn offers to all of these quartets at many stages uh, in their careers, and for the audience to absorb that full body, almost full body of work from, from the Opus 20s on, and one or two of the earlier works. And remember, Haydn points the way to everything. It's the beginning of that journey that we're still, we're still commissioning new work, we're still celebrating the string quartet, we're still breaking the barriers, we're still looking at the tradition established by Haydn and bringing young quartets, young audiences and all audiences to this is very important. Also Haydn of course has a huge association with London so what we do with local schools, uh, with communities in relation to Haydn's links with London, I think it's a very interesting thing to do. As well as major projects around Haydn and Schubert, Bach, Mozart and Beethoven, there are over 40 concerts in Wigmore's contemporary series, including new commissions. Helen Grime is the first female composer in residence, and in the new season there's a focus on the music of the contemporary German composer and clarinetist Jörg Wiedmann. Uh, well, Jörg Wiedmann, of course, is very uh, representative of the, the tradition of the composer performer that's very much associated with the whole. Uh, Bissoni was the first person who stood on the stage more or less here and it is very telling that Tobias Zimmermann, Anders Schiff, uh, the Heath Quartet, the Hagen Quartet, the Tetzlaff family, so many artists want to be part of this and, and the conversations were relatively easy actually to, to get everybody to shape this season around Jörg Widmann uh, to celebrate his chamber output which is, which is a very significant uh, part of, of the modern German voice and to celebrate him here in the context of all of his work. And contemporary music will sit alongside an extended early music series. There's been an astonishing uh, interest in the early music and vocal program here in, in recent years and it's been a great joy to, to see that, particularly the early music program, expand from 10 concerts a year to, to over 50 concerts a year and to watch that audience grow uh, in terms of diversity and age profile and also to see that, that so many artists uh, want to be part of that. Live streaming online has become an ever more important aspect of the Hall's engagement with audiences. And to encourage people to visit, 20,000 subsidised tickets are available for under 35s, with over 2,000 free tickets for 8 to 25 year olds. Well, part of the, the next five years, of course, is reaching out to new audiences. And we're very pleased that we're going to broadcast some master classes here uh, live on our own website and that of course reaches out to students all over the world and to audiences all over the world. As well as new faces, the 2017-18 season promises the return of a pianist whose name has become almost synonymous with Wigmore Hall. Well it's always a pleasure to welcome Sir Andrew Schiff back to the hall and in the season that we're, we're still in, Andrew is, is making a huge contribution here in terms of the master classes that he's giving and all that he can pass on to these young students and to us as an audience because it's fascinating to sit in a master class whether it be with a singer we just had Brigitte Fassbender here and that was a wonderful experience with young singers including some past prize winners of our, our song competition but to have Andras here in that context is wonderful and he in many ways personifies the spirit of the whole a place where a young artist as he did comes to earn their chamber music and their recital credentials and then they come back so often through their career to reinforce them 
And that goes on for so many decades. We celebrated Andres's 60th birthday here. We had the great honour of presenting him that evening with the gold medal of the Royal Philharmonic Society, which has only been presented about a hundred times since the 1830s. And is rightly regarded, I think, as one of the great prizes and one of the great honours in international classical music. And this association with Andres Schiff goes on and will go on for many years to come. Wigmore Hall enjoys a passionate and enthusiastic audience, and that passion is reflected in Wigmore Hall Learning's approach to making music with people from all walks of life. Each season sees over 500 learning events, some at the hall, many reaching out to communities across London and further afield. Last year, Wigmore worked with more than 80 schools and engaged with 500 teachers and support staff. It also visited 14 care homes, hospitals and centres which help people to overcome poverty and homelessness. We want to share that very special essence of chamber music and song and that for us is not only about the wealth of incredible music that happens here at Wigmore Hall, it's also about a group of people coming together and making music where every voice is heard and equally valued. And for us that's at the heart of everything that we do. That has inspired us in terms of our learning programme in 2017-18 to look at the wider context of the seven ages of man and to look at our own life journey and how that ties in with the learning department here. And the concept of parenthood, of course, is central to a learning department because we have events for the babes in arms, the under ones. We work with nurseries, with the under fives, with that wonderful chamber tots programme where instrumentalists and, and trainee uh, animateurs go out and, and work on storytelling and music making with very young children. Then we tie in with the various stages of the curriculum uh, and key stages uh, in schools. Uh, and, and we work with people with dementia in, in care homes right across the capital and beyond. And that's very inspirational, very moving work. So we look at, at what life brings in terms of relationships, in terms of bereavement, in terms of family, and tie that in with all the various stages of life that are currently represented in our learning programme. I think it could be a very inspirational year. As well as song and string quartets, the solo piano repertoire is an ever more important part of the Wigmore Hall year. At the moment we've got three outstanding young pianists visiting us quite a lot. We have Francesco Piemontesi who will continue his Mozart cycle, Igor Levitt who comes back with various surprises including a little bit of Shostakovich and Daniel Trifonov of course who's, who's about 25 and looks an awful lot younger and he tells me that he's going to come in a program that will include some Rachmaninoff and some Chopin and we look forward very much to that indeed and how lucky we are three very different pianists three very different approaches all filling the house and all creating a huge sense of excitement around piano and remember the the piano series here has, has grown from about 25 recitals a year to almost 70, so there's a huge hunger for solo piano repertoire for a diversity of pianists of all ages and stages in their careers. And again, that's very vitally underpinned by a number of major donors who really appreciate the fact that we've expanded and continue to expand the piano series and the scope of the programming, that it's not just Beethoven, Haydn and Mozart, that we go beyond that. We're incredibly grateful actually to the many, many people who support Wigmore Hall every year. Um, and they give whatever they're able to afford. You know, they're either um, giving a gift on top of their membership, um, or in response to our annual appeal, um, or sometimes they make more substantial gifts towards something that they're particularly interested in, whether it's a learning uh, project or even supporting a concert. Everything that they do makes a difference. We need to raise £1.7 million a year, which seems like an enormous sum, which it is. Um, but cumulatively, everything that uh, our donors do um, takes us ever closer to that total, and we're very, very grateful to them all. Artists really love this place. Uh, they love the atmosphere in the hall, they love the intimacy, uh, they love the fact that they can communicate with almost each and every person in the audience. A singer can look everybody in the eye, and that's reflected in the amount of special projects that artists are willing to take on just for this whole. So when, when I ask a quartet, like the Heath Quartet, if they would learn Jörg Widman's quartet, the answer eventually is yes, and uh, because that's a huge investment for them. Uh, but it's also a signpost to all of us, a signal that we, we shouldn't rest on our laurels. 
we need to keep reinvesting. We have to invest in audiences of the future, getting people to, to come here to invest their time because it's not just about money. It's about giving up an entire evening. Uh, sometimes it's about emotional investment, intellectual investment. You have to prepare to come. You can't really come unprepared to, to some of the concerts here and they demand a lot of the listener. So to encourage that sort of audience of the future is central to what we've always done and central to what we'll do over the next five to ten years. And that's where the investment goes, the, the wide repertoire, the fact that we can embrace everything from Haydn to Widman in 1718 and look beyond then to, to so many others right up to 2021. The fact that we commission anything up to 40 new works a year with international collaborators and with the great artists of our time, all is a sign of, of the whole's place in international musical life and the affection and the esteem that artists and audiences have for this place. The continued success of Wigmore Hall is only achievable thanks to your generosity, support and friendship. Without your help, four out of ten concerts wouldn't happen. There are many different ways in which you can support our 2017-18 season. Every gift matters. Thank you.